Professor Miroir, distinguished guests, Sarah's students, soon to be graduates, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a great honor that uh, Sarah's and Professor Miroir have accorded me to hand you your diplomas. I hope I can get through as many of you as possible before having to catch my train back to Den Haag. I'm sorry if I have to rush out in between, but uh, you know, this is part of the problem uh, of Europe at the moment, uh, and it's something I'm just going to mention a few words on. <coughs> Professor Miroir asked me to just say a few words, one and a half hours. You're okay, aren't you, with that? <laughs> I mean, it's okay, really. We've got plenty of time. I'll just say a few words, um, and what I actually wanted to do was to ask you to, at this moment in time, just as you're about to graduate, to really reflect on what Ceres has given you. Especially, I've been associated with the MA in Government and Development Policy, and I just want to reflect a little bit on what that gives you. Because when you're actually doing this Masters, you have no time to think. You just have to get those essays in and do your research paper. But you don't really have time to think about what you're getting. And this is not a PR for Ceres. It is a bit of a PR for Ceres, I have to confess. But when I look at Ceres as masters, I think of three major things. Apart from all the wonderful teachers you have, firstly, you get a critical masters, and that's really important, and I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. Number two, it's about the practice. It's not about some abstract theories, it's about really what's happening. And number three, this sounds a bit jargonistic, but I'm going to explain it. It's a holistic masters, which is also really important. And I'm going to end with a joke, okay? So I'm going to tell you about that in just a second. But let me just tell you about the critical aspect of it. We go on and on and on about critical. What does that mean? Is it really consequential? Well, yes it is. We're actually in this mess because people haven't been critical enough. We've churned out robots in the universities who come out with silly theories which are untried and unproven and actually when you look at them they're quite duffed. Let me just give you an example. We like privatization. I like private companies. I think private companies are wonderful. But do we privatize everything? Is it wise? Why do you think I have to go back so early to Den Haag? Because the rail system is buggered in Europe. Certainly in the Netherlands. Go back 30 years ago, the finest rail system in the world. Singapore came to study it. Country after country came to study it. It was state-run. The bee in the bonnet, let's privatize, let's privatize, don't think about it. We get some young university graduates who are advising the government. They have no idea what they're saying. But they privatize. They privatize what is a monopoly. What do you think the first thing that these managers did in the new private rail system in the Netherlands? They tripled their salary within one day. You know when people died recently in Amsterdam in the rail crash? You know what they find out? No money for investment in maintenance. Now, listen to this. One week ago, the head of the Liberal Party in the Netherlands, called the VVD, the one that demanded the privatization in the first place, what do you think it's demanding now? Nationalization. <laughs> Do you think they have money to nationalize? They don't. How much money has been lost by the Dutch system with this stupid privatization? I say this because I want people from developing countries to learn lessons not only from their own countries, but from the advanced countries. Okay, so one of the things about the Ceres Masters is we talk about these problems. We talk critically. Just one more thing, 
because this is a bee in my bonnet. For years and years and years, people in developing countries have been told, look, don't print money. Printing money is the worst thing you can ever do in your economy. So when you're in trouble, don't print money. You remember this? What are the Americans and the Europeans now doing? <laughs> now, I'm not telling you go back to your own countries and print money like mad. I'm just saying use your brain because sometimes you should print money, other times you shouldn't. And that's why I think the Ceres Masters is very important. You don't get many of these sorts of masters around which actually encourage you to use your brain because people we bring here are trying to stimulate that. Okay, I don't want to labor it too much. So this is the critical dimension, the practice. Yeah, we read about all these things in books and this is the way it happened. Did it really happen this way? Are these people who are teaching you really knowledgeable? Sadly, in many universities, they've actually read everything from a textbook. They're no more knowledgeable of the real situation than you. But they've just read more books than you. But we manage to get a lot of teachers here who have practical knowledge. And when they talk about China, most cases they've actually worked in China. They've been in China. They know the positive and the negative. When they talk about Africa, it's the same. So, one of the things emphasized is the practice. We often say it's really important to understand really what is going on. Well, how do you do that without a knowledge of the practice? Third one, the holistic approach. What does that mean? Well, what it means is, and let me just give it some context, my nephew. My nephew is doing, or did, sports psychology. What the hell is sports psychology? <laughs> 25 years ago, his mother did a general degree in psychology, where you know some clinical psychology, some industrial psychology, etc., etc. Why? Because actually a holistic view is far better for the human being. It gives you a sense of perspective. Now, he's just done sports psychology. Can he get a job? Answer is no, because there are thousands of sports psychologists around all hunting for a few jobs. Is he good at his job? Answer is actually no, because he's so limited in his knowledge. Now, this is a trend generally in higher education which is incredibly destructive for our future. Okay? The specialization that we are encouraging in our students. Again, I say the MA that Ceres offers is actually very broad ranging. You get a knowledge of lots of countries, you get a knowledge of lots of dimensions of the development studies. That's really important. You're not a health development economist. That's what we do now. MA in health development economics. MA in education development economics. MA in virtually, you know, one-legged poor people, as it were. You understand, it's becoming more and more stupid. But the broad, general knowledge that we need to adapt and develop is missing in our societies. Okay, that's my spiel for Sarah. Just before I wish you all success. I know it's a terrible world that you're going into. You know, I've been going on about it and saying how dire it all is and terrible and so on and so forth. Still, my, less, my message for Europeans is don't worry. Actually, you're on a fast track. A lot of this is orchestrated by the Germans to deliberately integrate Europe. That's my view. And integrate it rapidly not slowly as the original project was. Okay, this is weapons of mass destruction. We scare the living daylights out of you, you sign on the bottom line, okay? And that's basically what I think. I don't believe there's going to be a disintegration of the euro because there'll be a disintegration of the world economy. It's absolute nonsense. If the Americans have to print money and buy Europe out, they will do it. 
because it's no good for America either if the euro goes. Okay, it's no good for anyone. That's why it's impossible. But it's really good to get European integration going. Okay, to scare everyone and say, look, if you don't do that, you lefties and radicals and so on, it's going to be terrible. And for those from the developing countries, you're on the fastest track of all. Okay, 20 years time, you'll have my children in your countries, incidentally. I've been telling them, migrate to Asia and Latin America and go anywhere you possibly can in developing world. So those of you from the developing world, you're absolutely in the right part of the world. Okay, for the future, your children will be. Now, my joke. I end with this joke, okay, so I just have time for this joke. Two pigeons in a field. One pigeon is feeling sick, like this, okay? And then the other pigeon says, you see that bull over there? It's got these droppings. If you go and eat those droppings, it has a lot of nutrition, you get strong. Ooh, eating bull's droppings, it's terrible, isn't it? But the pigeon goes and pecks a little bit, eats a few droppings. Wow, I'm feeling strong now. Feels so strong, jumps onto the first branch of a tree. Following day, eats more bull's droppings. Jumps onto the second branch of the tree. Third day, feels fantastic, goes and eats a whole wad of it. Jumps to the top of the tree. Farmer sees the pigeon, goes into the farmhouse, gets a gun, shoots the pigeon. Pigeon dies. Sad, isn't it? Moral of the story. Bullshit gets you to the top of the tree, but doesn't keep you there. <laughs> well, you are Ceres graduates. I don't expect any bullshit from you. <laughs> and therefore, no danger of you being shot. Okay? <laughs> But I just want to wish you, along with everyone else, a happy future. And we really hope that this degree makes a difference and that you make a difference in your future. Thanks a lot. Now we go to the nice part, isn't it? Yeah.